sought after private chef, Neil Anthony has an elite clientele and he's constantly developing new culinary experiences to pamper their palates. Krishma dropped in to offer Neil some inspiration. If you're entertaining at home and don't have time or the know-how in the kitchen, then Neil Anthony is your go-to guy. He's ready to roll with all the fixings for platefuls of delight, from canapes to the main course and dessert. With his signature pencil tucked behind an ear, Neil is ready to face any culinary challenge. And Karishma popped into his Cape Town base. It is every foodie's dream to have a chef as a best friend. Well, dreams do come true because one of my nearest and dearest friends is private chef Neil Anthony. Not only is he an exceptionally charismatic, dynamic and talented chef, he also has a penchant for all things spice. A recent client has asked him to prepare an Indian-inspired menu for an event. So when he called me and asked me to come help him whip up some Eastern inspiration in the kitchen, I grabbed my spices and headed straight for his apartment. Born in Zimbabwe, Neil spent 10 years in the UK and Europe, honing his skills under the watchful eyes and blistering tongues of masters Gordon Ramsay, Alan Williams, Jerome Henry and Marcus Waring. Hello. Hello, darling. How are you? How are you? Super, super. Come across, Thank come you. across, please. Neil, I am so excited to be your muse today. I'm excited. <laughs> and I know we always joke that I'm your spice dealer, so of course I brought you some spices awesome. to add so to I your collection. You joke about it, you are my spice dealer. <laughs> I am indeed. This is some authentic hand ground masala done by my, yeah, by my aunt. Masala. It smells, it's amazing. It is so, so good. It's the best stuff. Awesome. I can't wait to get started, so mm. tell me what's the plan? What are we doing here? My idea is to first start off searing the fish, then we're going to make a sort of separate spiced celeriac puree in there. Ooh, Quite a bit of yogurt and stuff like that as well. And then just finish the fish off in there, top it with the herbs, maybe a little bit of acidity, see whatever else I've got lying around my kitchen. Speaking of which, Neil, how did you get started in this industry? Did you know that you always wanted to become a chef? Classic story, big family, so always in the kitchen with my mom helping out and stuff like that. She was a great cook, great baker. And yeah, cooking and food just made a lot of sense to me. I was really bad at maths and stuff like that at school. And then of course I had the opportunity of working for Gordon Ramsay. Of course, Gordon. So speaking of Gordon, the big G. what was it like working with him? It's very cool, yeah. He's exactly like he is on TV. The persona is there, he's literally like Bang, bang, bang. He walks to the kitchen and it's like, and it's like very, very fast paced, fast energy, but very, very focused. Now, moving back to SA, did you always know that you wanted to move into the private chef sector? I came back with the intention of going private. I feel that food is such a sort of vast range now that there's so many areas people can go into, you know. We're not just cooks standing behind the stove cooking anymore. Now we're ambassadors and, you know, we're sort of driving change in terms of. You know, having people eat healthier, having people sort of eat a certain type of food or, you know, anything like that. So, speaking of which, I think we should get cracking on this dish Do for it. your client. A beautiful Mauritian sea bass. I love sea bass. Neil, how would you go about portioning this for a curry? I just want it in nice chunks, basically. Okay, nice. That's an actual cooking term. That's an actual term? It's an actual term, nice big nice chunks. Nice big chunks, I'll remember that. Okay. I use olive oil for my Celeriac puree, just gonna add an onion as well. Gonna form a nice base for my celeriac puree. Celeriac. Neil, why did you choose celeriac? Celeriac is actually the root that celery grows out of. It's got a great earthy flavor, it makes awesome soups and purees. And I think it's gonna lend itself really well to these sort of curry, fishy spices. Does it take a long time to cook? No, 10, 12 minutes in a hot pan. Can you give that a stir for me? I'm just going to start off with a tiny bit of salt on the bass. And then... That's a good sound. That is. Neil, how long would you clear the fish for? Uh, about two minutes maybe. Because we're still going to finish it off in the curry afterwards. So we just want to half cook it. And don't overcrowd your pan. Never overcrowd the pan? Never overcrowd it. And don't shake it around and stuff like that. Just get it in. Let them be. Let them do their thing. Pop them out. Pop this fish over here. I'm just gonna give this a quick stir. It's looking good, nice and toasty. It's looking amazing. Okay, I'm gonna come around. Can you come around? On this side. Okay, I think you could do about a tablespoon and a half. Yeah. Because you're also going to have the yogurt and the celeriac, mm, so I think it's going to calm all, it down yeah, slightly. Calm yeah. it down, give it a nice mellow, mellow feel to it. Oh. That is what you are looking for. Oh, amazing aroma now, as it hits that pan. And quick stir. And then what are you going to do after that? You're going to pop the onions. Onions. Can I ask you to chop something for me? Of course you can. 
You okay. can just grab two of those leeks. Okay. Yeah, just two. Okay. Great in the ginger and the garlic. Neil, how do you go about creating a menu for a specific client? Well, I mean, some people call me a recipe rain man. Inspiration is everywhere, you know what I mean? I look at that leek and I go to myself, okay, cool, the leek, we've got, you know, baby chickens coming in on Wednesday, maybe I'll do a chicken and leek dish somewhere. At the end of the day, Mother Nature writes the menu. I love that, Mother Nature writes the menu, that's amazing. Okay, so we're gonna pop these in there? Let's go for it. Nice. Perfectly chopped. You think Gordon will hire me? In a heartbeat. Oh, that's amazing. Yay! Pass us the yogurt. Oh, are you yogurt or yogurt? What do you say? Yogurt. Yogurt, yeah. This a lot of people yogurt. say yogurt. It's good. There you go. You have that back. Yeah. It's going to be the perfect smooth base of this curry. Just straight into our blender. Look at that. That looks amazing. Can I have People a taste? Actually, yeah, get involved. Good. Wow. You stir that for me. Okay. Now the fish. Pop that bass back in. You see, okay. reheat through. Dot them around. Just to finish that off. A couple of chives. Our good old favourite. Our favourite. Coriander. coriander. A tiny touch of sweetness. Oh, a little bit of mint. Smells so good. Just organically drape or scatter them over. Another a little bit of olive oil. Oh wow. But now I think we need to give it a taste before you have to present it to your client. Definitely. I would never ever serve it to my client without taste testing it with you first. Oh amazing. I am so excited to taste your curry, Neil. Perfect curry weather. It's never not curry weather. Breakfast, lunch, dinner? <laughs> all the time. Nice. Every day, all day. Super. Okay. Look how good that looks. Oh my gosh. So, should we tuck in? Let's. Let's do it. Oh wow, it's so good. And the yogurt and everything yeah. just goes so well. I love how the celeriac is just slightly sweet. Mm. You get that from roasting it. What food do you love cooking the most? It changes day to day with me. You know, weather dependent, if it's cold, then I want you know, a bowl of mash. You know, if it's nice and sunny, then I want a nice fresh prawn salad, maybe with some watermelon and some mango and something like that through it. So it just depends, really. But um, yeah, it's got to be fresh, local, and seasonal. I think it's the most important. What is the best food that you love eating? Anything my mom makes me. Ah, oh, that's the that best answer. That is the honest answer. I will not lie to you. Now, let's talk about the show for a bit. How did Private Chef Neil Anthony come about? I was on a production on SABC and I was, I was a guest on it and I literally sort of said to the people there, hey guys, we should shoot my own show, what do you think? And we had a meeting the next day and shot a pilot and then it's been a whirlwind. What have been some of your highlights of the show? The highlights are basically every single dinner party. We have these amazing people coming around and just, just food bringing people together. I think that's the most important thing that we show. And it's a real life shot, you know, it's not like we stage anything. We totally fly on the wall, it's very organic. And would you say there were some dishes that were a bit more exciting or challenging to prepare? Yeah, I mean, we did rabbit in the one segment, which was cool, which I think people see a lot of. So yet again, you know, exposing people to different things. And souffle is always scary. I mean, you know, for those 13 minutes, you're like, is it going to rise? Is it not going to rise? Living on the edge. You're literally <laughs> standing in front of the oven going like, you know, please, please, please. Just experiencing the, you know, the beauty of Africa as well. Neil? I think this dish is going to shine on your Indian-inspired menu. Thank you for coming over and tasting it. I couldn't have put it through a sterner taste test. Cheers. Anything for you? Yeah.